Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we find ourselves in the courtroom where one of us is the prosecution and the other is the defense. We'll be discovering and drafting which evidence we think we need to win the case. We'll be calling and questioning witnesses, building arguments by chaining together cards and earning influence. We'll be trying to use that influence to sway the biases of the jury to our side and of the argument. Lawyer Up is a two-player asymmetrical card game, plays in about an hour, and it's published by Rock Manor Games. It's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to show you how the game is played, and then I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are not final, they're a prototype. You're going to want to check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. Now the game comes with multiple cases that you can play. I'm just going to show you one of them. This is the murder case. Again, check the Kickstarter link to see which cases come in the box in the campaign. And each of the cases has a different setup, have different witnesses as you can see here. Some of them have slightly different rules and such like that. Uh, but we have this set up for the murder case and we have all nine specific witnesses out in the courtroom right now. Now one player is going to play the prosecution and the other player will play the defense. At the beginning of the game, each of the prosecution and defense selects one of the few strategy cards. And those cards are going to say which witnesses are going to be in the game, uh, which biases are going to be important, and some different abilities for the, the different, you know, sort of the end of the game, if you will. But each player is going to select one. So the witnesses you see here are the ones that are out that I just showed you. And the defense side as well will select a strategy card. It's open information and we'll know which witnesses are going to be in the game. And we'll know what their ability is towards the end of the game. Now this case has 12 different jurors and each of them are going to start with different biases on them randomly set up. Like this one is biases about bureaucratic or justice or moral or immoral, emotional, logical, uh, or even corruption or uh, scandalous or maybe even evidence or facts. Now these are randomly placed out there like that. Uh, the top jurors have them on one side towards the prosecution, which is red, all these, and the bottom side has them on one tick to the right, which is the blue side, which is the defense side. So it's a little bit even to start the game. Now in this specific case, the prosecution will win if they get all 12 jurors locked, meaning they're swayed all the way to lock. If all 12 are ever locked, they win. Also, if at the end of the game, after the closing statement, if all of the jurors are at least on the prosecution side, the prosecution wins. If even one juror is on the defense side, then the defense will win. Now there's three phases to the game. There's the discovery phase, the trial phase, and the closing statements. Now in the discovery phase, each player is going to draw three cards off the top of this deck. This is a 60 card deck, each of them is going to draw three. They're going to look at these cards secretly. They're going to select one card to keep. They're going to select one card to put into their opponent's pile. And they're going to put one pile off to the side in a buried evidence deck, which means it can get to later with some other card effects, but it's buried evidence for now. Meaning the best chance for you to know for sure a person on the other side, like the defense, wouldn't get a card is to put it in your own pile. So you continue doing that, drawing three, keeping one, giving one, burying one, until all of these cards are gone. Now both the prosecution and the defense have their own starting decks. The prosecution has a red stripe and the defense has a blue stripe. So from these starter cards that they start with, they're going to shuffle in the cards that were in their deck from that discovery phase to make one large deck. Then each player is going to draw five cards off the top of their deck, and these are going to be secret in their hand. The prosecution, in this case, also starts with a bloody knife, the six card. So they have a hand of cards that they're going to be choosing from in the trial phase to play. So in that trial phase, the person who has the judge's favor, it's red right now, so it starts with, with the prosecution having it. They get to select one of these witnesses to bring out that they're going to be questioning back and forth with them and the defense. Now, if the prosecution wants to call this one, the way it works is if, if we're facing the table as us, as the prosecution, let's just say, you flip it so that the top number here is facing us. This means that the prosecution has an influence of five on this witness, where the defense has a value of two. So the difference here is three. So the prosecution essentially has like a three-point lead, if you will, in this specific witness uh, of this part of the trial. But if instead we call this witness, we have two, and it says prosecution's two on this side. But since the defense is on this side, this doesn't do them any good. So in this case, it's two to nothing 
us to start as the prosecution. But let's go and say we called that other witness. Now, some of the effects happen right away, like prosecution. If the prosecution called this, they'll draw an additional three cards from their deck, which will give them more options. But if the defense wins this, you know, this part of the, the trial with this witness, the prosecution will have to exhaust all their objections, which is something we'll go with later. But some of them have different sort of things that will trigger at different parts, depending on the witness. So now that we've called this witness, we're going to go into the examination, where we're going to play a card like this. Now, when we play a card, the, the, any of the biases on here, at least one has to match. If it's your first card, it has to match the witness. On your subsequent card, it has to match the most previous card you've played. So like this matches this, as long as we have one, we can place that. We were at five, and then we were plus two, so we're at seven. And you'll have an ongoing total that you'll keep track of on this little wheel, so you'll always know where the prosecution and defense is an influence. Now, not only are you trying to match up the, the biases and trying to get influence, you're also trying to time the, uh, the, you know, the different abilities correct. Now, this is an argument card. This says, if it's during the examination, which it is, if the top card of your opponent's examination is an argument, discard it. So if they had had an argument over here for their top card, uh, it would have been discarded. So sometimes you're trying to use the right card, the right situation, but in my case, I wanted to lead with this because I knew I could get it out there and it would give me another, you know, a bigger lead. So it's always thinking about biases and, and influence and possibly abilities. Now the defense is gonna play a card here. Now at least one bias matches. Uh, now this is one towards the prosecution, but since this is the defensive side, that doesn't count as anything. They're still at two, if you will. Now when you play this, it says, if you play it in the examination, you get to sway uh, the logic. So let's go look at that. We'll spin this like this. So here's logic. They can actually sway this towards the defense, which is going to be away from being locked. So that's a smart thing for the defense to do that because once something's locked, it's harder for the defense to get it out. You can't just simply use influence or sway. You actually have to use, you know, unlock special actions to get them off the lock. So they're swaying this away from being locked, which is, which is smart. And now it's sort of ticked a little bit onto the defensive side. Then I'd be back to the prosecution. Now there's cards. This first one was an argument. You can actually play one. Uh, so it's called a Procedure. Now, procedures are kind of like wilds. They, they're, uh, usually they don't give you any influence here, but they're going to be wild, which means they're going to match. It's going to allow you to chain another one on them. Instead of doing that, the procedure you can put in a procedure area. Now, this has an action on there, a special action, that you can trigger later. So if what you could do is for this, you could play it here for a wild, or you could play it off into a procedural area. Then on a future turn, for your action, you can then activate a, you know, something that's in your procedure area. So you're sort of like setting yourself up for further actions later that might help you out. Now, if the other player on their turn is playing a procedure card or an action or an argument card, you can object. Basically, you would play your objection. Now this, you only have three of them the entire game. And when you use this, it's completely out of the game. However, it allows you to essentially stop this player from playing this card. Now you can only do that once per witness and that card's discarded and that player will take another action. Another thing you could do on your turn is flip your sidebar. What this allows you to do is draw an additional card and it swaps the judge's favor, right? Now it was prosecution and now it's blue to the defense. This will help you win ties if, uh, you know, in the examination of a witness. And the last thing you can do is pass, but once you pass, you can't play any more cards than this specific witness. But let's say both players have passed now. Now here we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Prosecution has 11. Here, the defense has two, three, which is five, but this card said if the card before it was evident, you get a plus three. So they're actually at eight. So it's 11 to eight. The red had won this witness. And then the difference between these two is important. It's three. Also, you'll want to check cards for defeat or victory conditions because on the prosecution side, it says victory, we'd get to lock one either with the, you know, the heart or the logical bias on there. So they could take that one that was starting to go over there to the defense and lock it, which is going to be hard for the defense to get that back because they won with that card as their last uh, you know, evidence. Now, they have three influence to spend because they had 11 and the defense had eight. So they could use any one of these threes to move it one because that's three points of influence. So they could lock this or move this one, or maybe they could move this one to lock it and move this one here to lock it. So that's a total of three as well. So you can spend it in different ways. And you're also gonna wanna look at certain things from the witness. This said, if the defense had one, the prosecution exhausts all their objections, which now you know what that means. If I had, you know, use these, these would be all gone if I lost this witness. So I really need to win it. Uh, so the winner will take this, put it in their area. All the cards that were played will go to that player's discard pile. The judge's favor will be to the side that lost, in this case, defense lost, so this is blue. And the side that lost will flip their sidebar token. Again, that allowed them to draw an additional card, give them more options. Then the players will discard any cards that they have in their hand that they don't want, and they'll draw up from their deck so they have a total hand of five. 
And then from the remaining witnesses, that player, now defense is gonna call a witness, probably one that's gonna help them out. Now calling these different witnesses will continue to happen in examination until either the prosecution locks all 12 jurors, they would win immediately, or once all of the witnesses have been examined. So if you make it to the closing statements, you're gonna look at all your claimed witnesses, you're gonna look at your strategy card you picked at the beginning of the game, and this says you'll gain five influence for each of these on your claimed witnesses. So five influence times each of those. You're, the opponent would do the same with their strategy card. Whoever has more will get to sway the, the jurors based upon the difference between their influence and yours after they've been compared. And you'll sway the jurors just like I showed you before. And after that, if all of them are on the prosecution side, the prosecution wins, but if even one of them is on the defense side, then the defense wins. Now we talked a little bit about unlocking earlier that the defense has to play or enact an effect that says unlock one. In this case, unlock one of those, uh, you know, these tokens here, you'd unlock it like that. You can't just do it with regular sway. You have to use a special ability to unlock something when you're swaying jurors. Well, there you have Lawyer Up. And as I showed in the overview, Lawyer Up takes you through a court case in a strategic and tactical way, all of which is very thematic. Now, if you'd like to see the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video, and it will take you directly to the Kickstarter project page. And I'm sure the fine folks at Rock Manor Games would love your support.